I don't know if you remember in many episodes ago when I was messing about under the dash, I lost my 10 mil socket from the panard, the panard took it. And I just got in there after that epic sort of trip we did over the weekend. And this was sat in the footwell waiting for me. Must have rolled out as we were driving down and sat there. It's a nice gift from it, isn't it? Hello and welcome to the UK's last hurrah at summer. It's about 30 odd degrees, it's ridiculously hot um, and I've got this entire workshop to get back to spec because we've had a very busy last couple of weeks and it's a right old mess. Um, I don't like working in a mess so uh, yeah I've got a lot of tidying up to do today. So I thought while I was doing that and while I was doing a couple of other jobs like I've got a flat tire on the discovery and stuff which I'm going to have to sort, um, I thought we'd do some questions and answers as this is the first year anniversary, the 12 month anniversary of Tasty Classics. How cool is that? One year since uh, the first video, which was taking the truck to the American Classic Car Show at Alton Park, which was great. Um, that was the first video that I sort of put up, apart from some other stuff um, that I'd tried earlier on, many years ago. Um, but yeah, so uh, it's been 12 months um, and the channel's sort of become a lot bigger than I thought it would, which is brilliant you know that's that's really good i didn't think anybody would want to watch any of this but apparently you do um and you've been sending in some questions so we're gonna get right into it straight away um and tim visits has asked the first one i think we're going to go from instagram to facebook to youtube um so tim visits has asked uh what would be your ideal next nurburgring project car um and i mean it's difficult to sort of say but the mondeo would have been brilliant i like a big saloon car for the nurburgring you know a big saloon car because you've got the auto bar and you've got all that sort of good stuff and it's a lot more fun throwing something that's a bit of a whale around the the nurburgring i really really enjoy that i've taken a few big cars around there so uh i don't know something big and stupid really big and slow and uh, getting everybody's way and it'd just be great um, right, next question. Mr. Andrew K says, when are you going to do your bike test? And get some rusty bikes on the channel. Yeah. Um, first of all, I don't know anything about bikes. I really don't. I can't, you know, I've driven, I've driven a couple. Um, but, um, yeah, I had my CBT when I was sort of like 17 or something. But I've never passed my big bike test and I would love to. It would be, um, a, it's a big goal for the next couple of years. Um, unfortunately, to get all your gear and get the bike and get your test passed, it's a few quid and sort of, I'm not there yet, you know. Uh, you know, this is uh, financially crippling, so, um, but hopefully it'll pay off in the future. And uh, yeah, a big bike test would be on the way and I'd love to get to stuck into some Left for Dead bikes, you know, that'd be good fun, wouldn't it? Jazz Cool 4 says, great name, um, do you work on customers' cars as your day job? Um, no, have done in the past, um, don't really want to do it anymore, um, tend to um, just try and make this my day job, um, which again, it's financially crippling, so um, if you can help via any of the Patreons and other cool stuff like that that we've got going on, um, then um, I'd be very grateful. How do you say that name? Jez? Gez? Jez? Jez Taylor. He says, what was the product you used to bring your black bumpers back to life? And I use this for tyres and stuff as well and other things like that. Um, it's This is something that I got worded up on by Ben's Trim, the guy that does the trimming on the Mini and various other things like the Mercedes and stuff. Soft 99 tyre wax. And it's uh, just like, it's like a shoe polish. You sort of brush it on and then buff it off. Really, really good stuff. We did a little trial. I wish I'd filmed it, but it was well before I had this YouTube channel. But we did this um, trial where it was on the Amiga plastics, actually, where we tried all the auto glim stuff. We tried this and we tried black plastic bumper paint. The bumper paint won well out of the park. So if, you, if you've got faded plastics and you want to get them back to black, paint them. 
with the but you've got to get the proper stuff um just go and have a look for it there's stuff online you'll, you'll find something but the black paint and it lasted forever and it was great so um that's what i would recommend John Armand says, I think this might be Facebook, by the way, as well. Uh, John Armand says, and if you want to follow me on Facebook and Instagram and stuff, please do, because I'm always putting updates and stuff on there as well. Uh, but John Armand says, when are you getting outside concreted? Uh, yeah, fantastic question. I did mention it in one of the last videos. Um, however, there is something in the pipeline here um, to do with that wall there. So everything's on hold at the moment but in the next six months something's going to happen so we're just waiting for that to sort of fall into place so keep your eyes and ears out for that you know all to do with space neil healy says i'd like to know what happened to the cavalier uh so the cavalier was bought by a bloke um who needed who was restoring one or two or i think he was restoring one his mate was restoring another and he was in the owner club and stuff and he wanted the parts off it so it went off to be a parts car a couple of reasons for that one it was rotten it, the chassis was rotten it was bad you know that when a chassis is rotten on a car it's pretty much game over you know what i mean you have to do some serious work to get that back to spec you know so yeah it's pretty much game over it might have been worth it but it wasn't a particularly great sort of spec or anything. It had a slush box and things in it, so not the best. Um, but yeah, it was a cool little car. Really enjoyed working on that. And I wish it wasn't as rusty because I would have liked to have saved that, but it just wasn't. It, once you'd fix all the rest of it, it'd still only be worth about 1,500 quid. So it wasn't much point really, you know, from a financial sort of point of view, which I have to pay attention to at the moment. Alistair Carlton says, what's the update on the Spitfire? It's parked over there. Um, and yeah, it is, uh, uh, everything's bought for it. So I've got brand new wheels for it over there. I've got some other stuff. I was waiting to decide on what color to paint it. Now I put like a, a questions out, asked people and nobody said what I wanted them to say, which was like a gunmetal gray metallic or something like that, which I thought would be quite fun, but nobody suggested that. Everybody said, put it back to blue. So. We're probably going to put it back to blue because that'll be the easiest one to do anyway because it's just one coat so um yeah um we'll probably do that um in some turbo or something which we did with the ambassador um but yeah so uh that's the update on the spitfire the episode is going to be coming out hopefully before the end of the year where we completely turn that thing around you know which i'm really looking forward to but it's just there's no rush no rush you know we'll just do it we'll get to it when it when it comes to it you know Pete Tucker says, are there any particular cars you'd love to see, uh, you'd love to do a Left 4 Dead on? Yeah, um, I mean, th there's there's a few. Um, there's lots of saved searches that I have. Um, those saved searches are a Peugeot 206 Gran Turismo. And if you don't know what that is, I'll put a picture up here. Um, that is a car that I need to put my hands on at some point in my life. Same as the, Seb uh, the Sebastian Loeb Citroen C4. Just need to put my hands on it at some point. Um, and yeah, I like French cars and stuff as well. Um, other save searches. Obviously, you've got sort of the Vauxhall Carlton's, Lotus Carlton's, best cars in the world, but they're very, very expensive. I would love to do a Capri um, at some point. I've had a, uh, yeah, I've had one Capri. Um, I've had a couple of Sierra, well, I've had a few Sierras. Um, so yeah, anything like that would be brilliant as well. But again, money, they're a little bit out of my reach at the moment to find the sort of one that I'd want to do. Because if I was going to do that, a Sierra or something, I'd like to sort of, or a Capri, I'd like to do the whole thing on it rather than just sort of get it running and um, bin it. So yeah, um, that's the kind of thing. But I do like 90s stuff. I really like 90s stuff, which is a bit of a bore late because a lot of the 90s stuff, it's all electric and that is a headache. Um, but yeah, I love 90s cars. I think they're great. Um, but yeah, anything really. So um, I just keep my eyes out. I've got a couple of interesting ones lined up for the next couple of weeks. Graham says, would you ever have a diesel? 
yes absolutely don't mind a dirty div at all um so yeah whenever there's a diesel knocking about we'll we'll, we'll get one if as long as it's been sat in a hedge for 10 years fine great we'll get it going you know diesels are relatively well simpler um than, than petrols so um yeah let's get a little derv on the go tailgates are brilliant um paddy alexander asks um are there any other shows you'd like to make it to and yeah loads but this year obviously again i keep mentioning with moving house and stuff which has taken up huge amounts of my time and the various sort of other things that have been going on um i've not had a chance to go to the shows that i wanted to go to next year i will go to a lot more um i'm going to spend the summer pretty much enjoying the fruits of my labor and visiting shows rather than sweating my ass off in the garage you know underneath cars welding and things um and he also says i'd love to see some diesels what is it with diesels um and a collab with bad obsession motorsport right i love bad obsession motorsport wow it's richard bunnings and uh, what's the other guys i can't remember the other guy's name um anyway i'll put it in the thing go and watch their project binky series and uh, the s car go wow they are the like i'm very slapdash with what i do i just sort of get it out the door they are the complete opposite that mini restoration has taken them donkey's years but it is the finest in automotive engineering you'll ever see they've managed to fit an entire toyota silica's running gear and engine and everything into a mini and they haven't made it a stupid wide body or anything so it's just insane that what they've actually done there thoroughly recommend it and i would love to meet them at some point i think is it uh well one, one of them does a podcast or something i'd love to go on a podcast with them i'd love to talk to them i think where we are as sort of you know youtubers and stuff i think they're all the way up here and i'm still very much down here so i think they'd probably laugh me out the building if i asked to go and speak to them but give them a message comment on their things ask them say go and you know do speak to tasty classics do a podcast with them whatever you know I'd, I'd love to meet them i think they're quality guys they drink a lot of tea as well and i'm all about that steve martin says um as an avid btcc fan i've noticed a load of btcc related paraphernalia attached to your walls are you a fan uh the answer is yes big fan um you know colin turkington is a guy for me um bmws uh i just think yeah it's absolutely brilliant i love british touring car championships it's for me the best racing um you know sort of elbows out you know um just a real close um race and you tend to have a lot of variation in results um compared to stuff like formula one which i've never massively been into and especially after a couple of years ago what they did to hamilton which was just a complete disaster for the sport really um and yeah I, i'm just not interested in that anymore at all it's just a weird weird world formula one that i'm just not particularly into not my scene um rallying as well i really like um and but i haven't watched that as much over the last few years maybe that's because i've just been so busy doing other stuff but for one of the same reasons as touring cars is they've started messing about with things like um hybrid and stuff get that out of my motorsports i don't want it in there it's horrendous like get it away and i've found that a lot of rally cars now all look almost identical so they all have the same silhouette and the same wings and the same sort of liveries and stuff and i'm just yeah not into it as much as i used to be sadly when it was stuff like your zaras and impressors and evos and ford focuses you know that was really cool i really enjoyed that it's a nice corvette over there i'd film it but i don't think they want me to film it um but yeah btcc i think was the most sort of um well-rounded sport it had everything in there for me you know big sort of elbows out rubbing into each other just a really great sport um i haven't watched it as much the last couple of years because of the hybrid thing what a waste of everybody's time get it out of my motorsport i honestly it's such a waste of just there was there was a um a couple of years ago well no a year or so ago when they introduced it one of the drivers their 
hybrid broke and they ended up winning or, or getting fastest lap I think it was um, and he said afterwards and I'm sure that he got in trouble for saying it but he said um, I got a uh, I got fastest lap or whatever because I didn't have to worry about using the hybrid. So it doesn't make the cars faster, it doesn't make them any better, it's just a complication for the drivers and it just takes something away instead of adding. And it's like, you know, giving them a boost at a certain point, like, you know, press to overtake and stuff, it's just complete rubbish, man. It's just, it, I, I hate it, I hate, there's no, there's nothing good about it, no one could convince me otherwise. Um, same with stuff like Formula E and stuff, what a waste of money that is. Um, anyway, next question. Uh, still on Facebook, Stephen Grayling says, um, out of all the cars featured, what would you like to have bought brand new? Easy, Scimitar. Now, that's because the Scimitar, um, well, I, I just want to see one brand new. I, ju I just want to, because they're, when they're old, they're so fucked. And I just want to see what it would have been like. God, that sounds so nice. Um, sorry. Uh, I would have liked to have seen what it was like when everything fitted and I would have liked to have enjoyed one brand new because you wouldn't have had to work on it and the, the downside to a Reliant Summit is when you have to work on it because they're just not a nice car to work on at all. Being fiberglass and having such things in the way and it's a big knuckle scuffer and you're trying to do things, it's, it's just not a nice place to sort of be in which reminded me when I got the other Summit that we did here and reminded me why I got rid of my original Summit. But anyway, um, I would like to see a brand new one because then you wouldn't have to worry about working on it and you could just float around in it and I think it'd be a great car. Phil Pugh says, back on the sort of BCCC theme-ish, um, did you used to have a BMW race car? And yeah, I was building one. I was on my way to building one. My idea was that um, I would race it in a tin top series. So I got myself a 320i E90 and the idea was to make a sort of touring car replica type thing. Got quite far with it, um, and well, it was interesting. It became so good that it was boring. So I took it on a few track days and it was just dominating in the corners. It was suspension on it, bigger brakes, really, really good tires. Um, got all the geometry set up and everything. And yeah, took it round um, Alton Park and Cadwell. And there was nothing that could touch me in the corners, you know. There was, there was, I was up the arse of Lotus Leases going around corners, honestly. Thing was completely stripped out and stuff, it was brilliant. Um, but it became a little bit boring for me, um, that BMW, um, which was sad, but it was one of those things like never meet your hero, maybe. It was just so good that it was never surprising at any point. So I got rid of it and then I started doing this. So um, it's weird, I sort of just, yeah, not. Um, yeah, bit bit odd really, but um, I'll put a couple of little pictures up of that beamer, it's quite cool. So, you know, if we get some sort of more money in the future, um, I'd like to do another race car and it would probably be something like a Capri or, or a Lotus Carlton or a Vauxhall Carlton that I've sort of, you know, GSI or something. That would be the race car for me, something a little bit more surprising, maybe do some classic car racing um, or something American, something huge and American like a Ford Fairlane or something ridiculous like that, you know, um, that I could take on track days. That would be more interesting for me. Um, so yeah, there you go. Christian Thomas says, um, are you a real mechanic? If not, what's your real occupation? Um, well, I'd like this to be my real occupation, really. I do own two other businesses, uh, which I won't really go into, but they don't massively pay me loads of money or anything. So um, I have to try and do what I can to make this YouTube thing work, because I would like this to be my, my full-time sort of occupation, you know, my full-time sort of business. Um, 
And yeah, the um, uh, am I a real mechanic? I've never been trained. Um, I've never been, uh, never done an apprenticeship or anything. Rob that you've seen, who comes and helps me on the channel, he did his time served at Vauxhall, so that's why he did the engine for me on the Amiga and things. So he did an apprentice and things, but I never did that. Um, I've always just I've been working on cars since I was ten years old. Um, probably before that, really, but that was the only time that I can actually remember. Um, but yeah, so. Uh, you just yeah just experience man you know um, one of those things isn't it it's handy that we're doing this today because um it's so hot that i'm just sort of working in sort of 10 15 minute spurts and then talking to you guys um because my body keeps going into pub mode because it's so warm um but yeah this is this is helping just want to talk dead quickly again about the BTCC thing as well. My favourite BTCC car is probably the 90s uh, Peugeot 406. I love Peugeot 406, it's weird, I know, but um, there's many, many reasons for that. I could talk to you for ages about Peugeot 406s. I've got quite, I've had quite a few of them. Um, but what's your favourite BTCC cars? I also like stuff like the Mondeo, uh, the, you know, um, the Peugeot 405, the Renault Laguna, that kind of stuff. Uh, the Warstein BM, you know, the, the, the three series. Um, just loads of things like that. But what's your top three touring cars? Because I want to know people's like, what sort of years are we talking? You know what I mean? What, what the sort of, because we've got all sorts of different age groups watching this. And some people say, my favorite touring car was like Sierra Cosworth. And I'm like, what, when was that? That must have been ages ago. Um, Anyway, so yeah, just wanted to touch on that briefly again. Martin Taylor asks, it is Martin Taylor, isn't it? Yeah, Martin Taylor asks, what's your plans for the Mondeo? Um, well, the Mondeo, there's a couple of options, right? Option A and option B. And it all comes down to money, as is usually the case. Because even though I look like I'm massively wealthy here, I'm you know doing this on a complete shoestring um so far anyway but hopefully we'll start to pick up and we'll we'll be able to do a bit more um anyway so the uh the mondeo option a is we stick a brake pipe on it we stick a, a power steering pump on it and we stick it on the tower of power take it to a track somewhere alton park or something that's probably the most likely option um, it's still out there, you know, I haven't got rid of it yet, I still want to do something with it. Option B would be to restore it and put an MOT on it and all this sort of stuff. That would be very, very expensive. So, underneath the car needs renewing. Every single bit apart from the wheels and tyres wants renewing. So, expensive. You've got to, you know, it's all out there as well, apart from the rear subframe. So that is a problem. Um, but again, there's, there's ways I could maybe get around that with a bit of uh, powder coating welding or something. I don't know. I need to look at it, but it would be a massive undertaking. So it probably cost about a grand in parts and it would probably take me two weeks to do. Um, maybe more, but um, yeah, probably more because, you know, all the welding and stuff as well, I didn't forget about that. So, yeah, it would take a long time to do because you'd have to do it properly as well. You couldn't just do it sort of haphazardly like the rat rod outside. You'd have to do it mini-esque, you know, so it would take quite a while. At the moment, I don't really have the money to sort of keep everything going while I'm doing that. So it, it possibly not going to happen. But who knows? Maybe if stuff like Patreon goes you know really big and the, the channel starts getting more subscribers and stuff then maybe we might be able to but we'll have to sort of wait and see i think fucking wasps man i know it's hot but fuck off um so yeah there you go that's what's happening with the mondeo um it's just uh yeah we'll we'll see over time um nick crocker with a Slightly backhanded compliment, I think. Says, uh, who looks after your hair? Well, fortunately, the council uh, sends someone round every four weeks um, to get it sorted, so that's good. And it's probably due soon as well. Paul Hickinson says, after speaking to you at Arley, lovely to meet you, by the way. Um, it, would you consider, and you, I, I mentioned that the rear subframe on the Mondeo was unobtainium, 
in his words, which is the best word ever, um, would I continue? Uh, would I consider speaking to Drive Tribe and um, seeing if they'd help and all that sort of stuff? Well, again, I absolutely adore Richard Hammond, James May. Um, I think they're they're just you know real top guys. They're up here. I'm well down here. I think they'd probably laugh me out the building if I sort of went and asked them for any help. And again, don't massively need the help. It's just time and money. That's all that needs to be sort of plumbed into that car, really. Um, but again, you know, YouTubers wise, there's there's loads that I'd like to do sort of collaborations with. I'd love to do a dry tribe collaboration at some point, or even just do, you know, go on one of their podcasts or something like that. So you can help put my name in their comments, send them messages, you know, tell them, you know, come to speak to me, ask me, you know, whatever. Um, and they'll try and hopefully get some idea of who I am and then in the future we can do some stuff and it's the same with other YouTubers like um, I'd like to do more um, with YouTubers in the UK um, some collaborations like Hubner I really enjoy some of his videos he's a bit of a mad guy and he's got some really sort of passion for quirky weird cars which is just exactly the same as me so it'd be nice to talk to him um, and again like we talked about before bad obsession and stuff like that so yeah there you go um, hope that answers the question Roughly. Simon Bacoke, great name, says, um, or is it Bacoke? I don't know. Uh, would you consider doing a Mark II Astro or Mark II, Mark III Cavalier? Yeah. Uh, my first car on the road, legally, I had about 10 cars before that, uh, but my first on the road car when I was 17 was a Mark II Astro GTE look-alike it was a 1.3 swing um and it was the dog's bollocks that car it was a proper thing really really smart thing loved it to bits um so yeah i would love to do another one when they come up i'll do them they do rot away though and the good ones are a lot of money but there you go i love an old voxel hasdak says uh he's been watching the channel for a very long time um, as I think a lot of you have as well. Uh, Hasdak says, can you fix my Forester S Turbo, my Subaru? The answer is no, but well done for having one of those. What a wicked motor that is. What year is it? Let us know. I want to know what year it is. Is it like a 90s one? Um, they are one of the coolest things out there. I absolutely love them. Um, proper raw, raw car. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm all right, thanks. Got plenty of other stuff I need to fix. Drew Walker 1148 says, what's the one car that you'd like, what's the one motor carriage that you'd like to do a sort of left for dead resurrection on the most? Um, again, you know, I, it, who knows where we're going to be in sort of five or ten years time and, uh, you know, finances might allow me to get better barn finds and stuff and the dream one would be something like a Lotus Carlton that's been laid up for forever because... Big statement incoming, my favourite car and the best car of all time is a Lotus Carlton. So uh, that's my favourite car of all time. Um, so that's what I would like to find. But I'd also like to find stuff like, you know, I'd like to do Capris, Sierras, um, stuff that's a little bit out of my budget at the moment, but we're walk working towards, you know, that that's the sort of um, stuff that I'd like to do. But anything, I just like the quirky stuff. I like stuff that isn't particularly expensive or revered you know i still think they're really interesting cars to do so annoyingly the day before the um show the discovery got a flat tire on this corner here which is why it's parked in the workshop um so later on i'm gonna have to get the well there's two tires that need doing because the spare tires got the valves broken out so i'm gonna have to pull two wheels chuck them in the back of the truck and i'm gonna get those replaced tomorrow um and then uh, get those fitted. But I'll do it when I'm on my way home because I am live in Chester now, which is great. Um, and I can sort of, uh, yeah, um, go to the tyre shop quite easily, which is better because it used to take me a good sort of couple of hour round trip, whereas now I can just do it when I'm going home. <laughs> great. Gosh, roasting. Gilly8347 says, did you sell the Porsche? Uh, yes, I did. It went to probably the best home it could have done. Guy down south um, sent me a couple of updates on it as well. 
Um, and uh, yeah, when he bought it from me, it was a real sorted car. So it was probably one of the nicest ones available for sale in terms of service history, mileage and condition. And I'd done a lot of work to it, so it was really good. But what he's doing is he, he's taking it to that next level sort of just you know painting odd little bits here and just really sort of going through it little bits of trim here that sort of stuff to make it a real real spanking one you know so um yeah fair play to that i'm just really glad that it went to someone like that um and yeah the only reason i sold it was that the um it was sort of last in first out kind of vibe it was the one car out of all of them that i had here that i just wasn't really sort of massively attached to similar situation with the spitfire that's not going to be one that i keep that's going to be one that i sell so there you go they do have to be sold sometimes scott chegg 85 says uh, what's the oldest car you've driven um the panhard panhandle um 1959 that is the oldest car that i've driven i'd like to drive more old cars i'd like to drive even older ones i'd like to drive every car that was ever made is there enough time to do that i don't know but yeah just love driving cars really but that one was great fun to drive really good slightly nerve-wracking at times but yeah and there you go but that is the oldest car that i've driven nigel late life crisis says have you ever done any track days at alton park yeah done loads um alton park is about 10 five miles away from here it's very close um and yeah i've done loads of track days there i've also done my ards test there my ards test. license i've got a racing license and that was um, to with a vision of racing this bmw which i again sort of never did because i just found it a little bit boring and i thought i'm gonna go with that extra mile and spend all that money to do a race series I need to probably enjoy it a little bit more so in the future i'm hoping to find some big daft american v8 or something that i can race um or an australian one or just um you know an australian falcon or something oh, amazing um but yeah something a bit crazy is what i need if i'm going to go and spend all that money racing a car i need something that's a little bit more wackier rather than something that drives like it's on rails and magnets like that bmw did Mark Cassidy 5883 um, says, did the ambassador find a new owner? Yes, again, similar story with the Porsche. Um, someone from Nottingham Way, I think, picked the car up. <coughs> and uh, yeah, um, they're just taking it over that line, sort of doing the last little fettle and just, you know, a nice forever home for it. Exactly where I wanted it to go to. Again, just same sort of thing. Um, but yeah, um, wish him all the best with that car. It was, a, it was a lot of fun. Really enjoyed it. And it was the most viewed car on the channel. It is the most viewed car on the channel, which is bonkers, isn't it? But it's great, you know. Really, really fun thing to, to sort of um, hurt my back on, you know. Andrew Malion, I think that's how you say it. Andrew Malion um, says... Um, well, there's two questions there. Um, what made you decide to do YouTube um, and uh, road trip videos would be a good idea? Is there any plans? So, answer the road trip one first. Yeah, road trips, I just love doing, love doing as many of them as I can. Again, I'm sort of a little bit bound by finances and stuff. There's a lot of ideas for road trips. I'd like to do some going to places finding a car a left for dead and then driving it back here but in the uk it's not as easy as all that so i'd have to find ones that have got the v5 logbook that aren't you know that don't need any welding and stuff and that kind of thing so if i do get pulled at least i can have it registered and all that kind of thing in, in my name and on my insurance policy I've got trade policy which I, i'd have to put the red on and stuff um so there's a few things there that I'd, I'd have to do so it's not as easy as in america um where they can just get away with driving anything um over here i have to make sure that i've at least attempted to make it nice and safe and good and stuff which is possible so i am looking out for those cars but i've just never been able to sort of get you know do one yet but there's things like when we did the simit and we took it to tamworth and stuff and obviously with the panard going to the show so there's plenty more stuff like that i would like to do more um road trips i think it'd be a lot of fun um and he also says what made you decide to do youtube um 
there's quite a lot of compounding reasons and it was dead weird it sort of all came at once i i tried doing youtube videos years and years ago um and I, I just sort of, you know, put some stuff up and enjoyed it and things, and it was great. Never really got anywhere with it. And then I sort of got to a point where um, having this place, don't really want to do customers' work on cars anymore. Um, and um, selling of the cars became, because I used to sell quite a lot of Fiat 500s and such and DS3s and nice things like that. Um, to pay the bills and I still do the odd one which is why you've seen a Fiat 500 knocking about somewhere because that's just up for sale at the moment um, uh, but yeah so um, during the pandemic used car prices went mental and I decided to sort of back out of that market a little bit um, it was just uh, far too risky a lot of car places that I know came very close to going bang during that time because they just couldn't buy second-hand stock and things partly because the new cars weren't being sold and there was no trickle down of, of stock um, but uh, yeah so um, I was thinking what am I going to do with my time and how can I sort of make this pace play make this place pay and uh, YouTube was an answer for that I thought you know what I'm going to give it a year of hard graft because I had a little bit of savings I had some money saved up which is all gone now um, but I, I, I said look I'm gonna give it a try and if it works by the end of year one then I'll keep going and so far so good you'll be pleased to know uh, but there's still a lot more to do um, and yeah financially it is if you're gonna do it it just it's a lot of time you know it takes a lot a lot of time and you've got to be able to sort of bring some money in from from other places while you're doing it really um so you've got to be quite ingenious with it which I, I've, I've kind of been really um so far so i'm just hoping that um in the next year we build stuff up like patreon which um is is something really really important and i need to start taking more seriously I put the Patreon sort of details up in the last Panard video and uh, yeah, I had a pretty amazing response. I'd like to go through that with you now because um, there's been quite a few people that have jumped on board. So get ready to hear your name read out and um, I think we might put the name on the side of the truck. So Patreon, something that again, very sort of new app, don't really know what it's all about but I'm learning it and uh, yeah. It's, I put some details out in the last video and the response was brilliant. It was better than I could sort of ever imagine and I really, really appreciate your help with that. And, you know, I want to say thank you and this is how I'm going to say thank you in the videos. Every time someone new comes on in the next video, we'll put their names on a car. I think that sounds pretty fun. Um, and yeah, that kind of thing really takes a big weight off my shoulders. It sort of allows me to have a little bit more freedom um, to do stuff like, you know, financial freedom, to do stuff like the Mondeo and other things where, you know, there's no profit in that car. There's, it's not worth really sort of spending that time and money doing. But if I'm making money from the videos then um, and from Patreon, then it's, it, it's worth doing, you know, it's worth spending my time on it. So that's what it's all about and that's what it's for. So I want to say a massive thank you to the following people who have uh, been on there and signed up. And what I'm going to do in the future as well is that I was thinking of how I could um, give something back to the people on Patreon. And what I might start doing is when I go and pick up Left 4 Dead's on the trailer, um, that whole sort of thing I'm going to film before i bring them back here and that's going to be exclusive patreon content so going to find stuff um so yeah that might be in the future exclusive patreon content but i, don't, I need to work out how to do all that so it might take me a couple of months to get all that boxed off um so get in there and just make sure you're ready for that because that's going to be super cool but even if you don't watch it the help that it'll give me to do all this other stuff would be great in the last 24 hours lee owen legend Angela Jones, legend. Luke Mitchell, legend. Danny Points, great name with a Z. Matt Fellingham, Simon Grant, again, thank you. Philip Greeley, and J, Minty Micra, great, I take it you've got a Micra. Um, and last one that's happened since the Panard video, Alan McAllister. Um, 
Same last name as Kevin McAllister off Home Alone as well, so nice one. Very cool, one of my favourite films. Um, super thank you to everybody there. You've, you, you're just legends, absolute legends. I've got ten Patreons. Um, I'd love to get more. Please get on there and have a look. The link is in the description. And again, if you do that, I can do more cool stuff and bring you some stuff that you probably wouldn't see any other channel doing because it just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> there you go. Back to the questions. Francois World says, tea or coffee? Um, it depends when. First thing in the morning, I have a black coffee. Every other time of the day, I have a lovely cup of tea. Um, and that's it. And this time of year, plenty of water. Um, and then all other times, alcohol. Mr. Manbuzz, great name again. Um, he says, love the panard, would love to see it at the ring or taken back to the factory in Paris, the remnants of the factory. Um, I mean, who knows what's going to happen next year. That would be uh, one of my favourite road trips ever. If I could get that panard sorted to a point where I could take it to the Nürburgring, I could afford to do it. I would probably have to have some sort of support van, get one of my friends to come along behind me with some tools and stuff, but... Um, spare tyres and things but yeah I mean uh, I would love to take that to the Nürburgring it would be um, prohibitively expensive at the moment but who knows what's going to happen next year that would be a fantastic road trip um, and it's not going anywhere anytime soon so who knows Simon Ashdown says um, no Passat uh, in the in the pick which is the pick where I asked for all the questions. Um, and yeah, you're right, I feel terrible. Um, I should have put it on. Um, loved that car. Still, yeah, miss it, and I should have kept it. Just as I should have just kept it. Um, but yeah, anyway, yeah, apologies. Craig Johnston says, did you ever go at a Lada Neva? Yeah, I did. But I deleted the video um, because didn't want to fill the channel up with stuff that wasn't good. Don't want any sort of new subscribers to stumble across that and see me fail at getting that running. But what a pile of crap. Um, that's why they had such bad reps initially and still have, because they are crap. Um, it was just sea solid. Like, I've never seen an engine seize before. Maybe there was no movement at all. I tried to get the head off it, and then it was, it was one of the hottest days of the year. I was outside. I was getting burnt as I was doing it. There was no room in the engine bay. Everything was just, you have to take this off, to take this off, to take this off, to take this off, to take this off. It was just a bore lake from start to finish. So, um, yeah, uh, I hated I hated that car. <laughs> but it was kind of fun to watch, and then I deleted it. But anyway, there you go. He also asks, what uh, gave you the first idea to do the YouTube, and what's been the hardest part about it so far? Um, so, again, similar to what I answered before, but a different answer, if you want a different answer as well, because there was multiple things that made me want to do it, was I've always wanted to um, host Top Gear <laughs> since I was a kid, since I was a small child. That's always been my dream. Um, so I've always wanted to do something like that um, in, in sort of some media somehow. Um, and not because of, um, uh, you know, I want to work for the BBC or anything like that. It's just like their budget, their humour, their way of doing things, um, the the camera crew, the, the just everything about Top Gear. I think they just captured it so well. Completely lost it now, um, paying people that don't have a clue about cars. Besides Chris Harris, Chris Harris was the only one that actually knew anything about cars. The other two haven't got a clue. They're just presenters with accents that um, they put in front of a, a, a car and asked to talk about it. And it's just it's obvious that they don't know what they're talking about. And it's when you're a car fan. Um, it's same with a lot of the other, you know, presenters that they've had on recently, like Joey Tribbiani or friends, like, what the hell, Matt LeBlanc, like, what was that all about? Um, you know, they're, they're just, you can tell the banter and the, and the chat that, the, you know, Hammond, um, May and, and Clarkson all had was because they were big, true petrol heads and they had been for a very, very long time. And you could tell they knew what they were talking about. And uh, it, it, it's almost insulting when you watch the new Top Gear and stuff that um, 
we're, we're sort of made to watch it. It's just an entertainment programme, and I think they've sort of got away with, um, you know, gone away from it being a car programme. So they've kind of stopped doing it now anyway. But um, I'd always wanted to do something like that. Um, and I feel that one day, you know, if there's ever a need for a car programme, I'd love to get a couple of people together and, and do something like that, you know, because it would be, uh, yeah, I've got a lot of ideas for it. A lot of stuff that they did, you know, you could do again and just, you know, there's a gap in the market at the moment for another sort of Top Gear-esque programme um, made by real petrol heads on TV. YouTube's full of it, but on TV, that, that's what's sort of missing. Because there's still a lot of people that don't watch YouTube. Mad, I know. Um, so yeah, that, that's that's uh, why I, I another reason I wanted to start this channel was to sort of at least get my foot in the door with learning how this all works um, in terms of sort of cameras and stuff like that. So um, we'll see where we go in the future. But um, what's the hardest part about doing it so far? Um, it's incredibly time consuming. Just editing a big video can take uh, 12 hours, something like that, you know, three sets of four hours each night. Um, it's uh, if it's three days of filming or something, so it's incredibly time consuming, but also um, financially very, very uh, tough. You know, you, you've got to sort of, uh, especially to do it in this sort of level, you know, look at the amount of cars that we've done in one year. Um, it's been, uh, yeah, it's been, been uh, very sort of um, tough on the finances, um, but you know, hopefully, we're getting to a stage now where we're going to start freeing some money up and be able to do some more crazy things. Mystery Monkey says, uh, what's the longest you've owned a car for and do you like being ginger? And then uh, Gilly8347 has replied, he's strawberry blonde, which is exactly right. I am strawberry blonde. This is ginger. I don't know why, it just is. But you know, I'm blonde, not ginger. And if you believe that, you believe anything. No, I am. Um, so, and what does he say? Um, what's the longest time you've owned a car for? Um, I'm a big car hopper, don't usually own cars for very long, um, but probably two years is probably the longest I've owned a, a car for. Um, but yeah, some cars I've owned for hours, some cars I've owned for anywhere up to two years. Mr. Shadow Durr, Shadow Durr says, um, where'd you find all your cars from? And it's a mixture of mainly Facebook Marketplace and eBay, and occasionally some from people that I know. So um, it's they're out there. You've just got to look for them. Always looking, um, and yeah, um, it, that's kind of it. No, nowhere else really. Sometimes Gumtree, I think you know that sort of stuff. I think I found one car on Gumtree, and just yeah, a lot of places. GPS OMG says if you could only drive one car um for everyday use what car would it be um now as a daily for everyday use that does make a difference and the answer would be a brand new bmw 5 series um with the most toys you can put on it an electric tow bar and the biggest fastest diesel engine that you could put in it and it'd have to be the estate um, I used to have an F11 520D um, which looks like this when it's going around the carousel of the Nürburgring um, and that was one of uh, the best cars I've ever been anywhere near um, and I, I mean that in terms of everyday use so by far the most comfortable um, and the most economical for the size of it the space in it the the, the ergonomics of everything on that car were like nothing I've ever seen. The way everything was laid out, just a wicked, wicked motor. The way it drove, the way it sounded, the way it handled, everything about it, I loved to bits. Loved, loved, loved that car. Sold it, it had 160,000 miles on it, and that was the car that I'd owned for two years, and I put two sets of brake pads on it. So, um, yeah, real, real good bit of kit. But that would be it, if, I, if for everyday use, if I had to you know, choose one. The only thing is I'd still have to have something like the Disco for towing heavier cars and things, but you could tow quite you know, normal-sized cars with a, with a 5 Series estate. Um, but I love them. I think they're the best cars ever designed. But if it was, if I could only have one car for the rest of my life and couldn't have anything else, it'd be a Lotus Column. Blue Nomad says, Ben, what was your first car and what was your most memorable 
road trip. Well, the first car we discussed earlier, which was a Mark II Astra on the road. However, my first car not on the road was when I was 10 years old, and it was an Austin Maxi 1750 in gold. OGO 246V um, was the reg plate of that. It was a wicked motor. Um, my uncle bought me that from a friend, and uh, we lived on a farm. And uh, well, they lived on a farm, and I lived up in uh, Hazel Grove uh, near Stockport. And uh, my birthday is in July, and I went down in in, in the summer and uh, for the summer holidays. And there was this car, this Austin Maxi, my uncle had bought for me. And he taught me how to drive in it, taught me how to fix it. We changed a start motor and stuff on it when I was 10 years old. And it was just the absolute best. Loved, loved, loved that car. And then I got bitten by a spider in it. Seriously, I did. Um, which was just so weird. Drew blood and everything. Um, my weak 10-year-old skin. Um, and yeah, I just sort of... I, I, I stopped going in it as much then. And then it sat there over winter and uh, we ended up scrapping it. Um, and then I had about another 10 cars um, after that um, on the farm. We just kept buying old cars and driving them around and doing stuff on them, um, which was great fun. Uh, most memorable road trip. Um, a couple. Uh, I went to America not so long ago, 2019, I think. Um, hired a convertible Mustang 5.0, a Hemi Charger, uh, a Challenger, sorry. Um, was it Challenger or Charger? Charger. Charger. Less doors, challenger, more doors. That's how to remember it, my cousin tells me. Um, and yeah, sort of drove them around America, essentially. And I went from, um, in the convertible Mustang, went from uh, San Francisco, uh, up and down into Death Valley, and then back through to Arizona. And it was incredibly memorable because, uh, you know when you're in a plane and you come to land, and you get that thing in your ears where the pressure changes and your ears are like, oh, they're going to explode? <laughs> so there's this bit in Death Valley. Death Valley's like below sea level, I think, where there's this huge uh, hill that you go down for miles and miles. It's very, very steep hill because you're massively high up and you're just descending right into Death Valley. So I put my foot down in this Mustang, which was the fastest car, fastest I've ever driven a car. It ended up being 165 mile an hour, which is pretty cool. And there is on my Instagram if you go down there's little videos of the speedo and stuff which was a lot of fun and videos of doing a burnout in it and things um, but yeah so I uh, went down this hill at huge speed and in a car I got the ear thing the pressure changed ways and I was as I was driving along I was going ah, ah what's happening ah, ah I didn't know what was going on because I, I wasn't in a plane I didn't understand what was happening and it was just weird, but it was because of the pressure change. Absolutely bonkers. I've never, I didn't even know that was a thing, but it happened. Um, so I had to stop on the side of the road and let things work themselves out. I worked it out in my head and then I carried on. Um, but yeah, this is a photo of me um, holding up a bag of Death Valley sand that my sister wanted. Adriano Perotti, Perotti um, from Brazil, hello to you, um, says, uh, have you decided what colour you're going to paint the Triumph? No, because I kind of, um, I put a little poll out, as questions out, asking people what colour they wanted me to paint it, and nobody said what I wanted them to say, um, which was going to be like a gunmetal grey um so uh, metallic things uh so yeah it's probably just going to go back to blue alistair white says something that i've been asked loads of times before in the comments says loves the long format videos but would you not be better monetization wise and stuff if you split them up and the answer is not really no it kind of doesn't work like that it works on um uh interaction with that video and how long people are watching it for and all that sort of stuff and the, the problem with um, small videos section videos is you don't get as much interaction and things with them and uh, don't get them viewed for as long and stuff like that 
so that's why I don't do them but that's not the only reason why I don't do them the other reason why I don't do them is that's what I like to watch I like to watch long format videos I really enjoy watching um, two hour long stuff because I hate just sitting there and flicking through trying to find the next bloody thing to watch all the time it's so annoying um, and I love a video that's got a beginning a middle and an end I always try and do that with everything you know I've, I've got the car I'm trying to get it run it runs you know that, that that's just I, I love doing that or you know with the panard lass I've got a small amount of time to get this car ready I'm doing all the work and then you know massive ending we're at the car show I just love that that's just as a budding filmmaker that is more enjoyable for me and hopefully for you guys as well but yeah it doesn't necessarily you know if I split them up wouldn't necessarily make any more money or anything so um that's why uh, yeah don't do it Four Rings Restoration, um, Audi, uh, nice, I like it, um, he says, uh, what's your background and how did you get into cars, um, and um, what's your all-time favourite pie filling, great question, all-time favourite pie filling is probably sacrilege, I know, but um, cheese and onion or beef and vegetable, one of those two, I just like cheese and onion, um, I don't know why. Um, and yeah, what's your background and how did you get into cars? Um, background is cars and um, other stuff. Um, and how did I get into them? Since I was a tiny little toddler, I've just always been into cars. Did you ever do that thing when you... you right, let me know if you did this as well. But when I was very young, I used to sit in the car. You always used to, do, you know, kick up a fuss and try and get into the front uh, passenger seat of the car. And even at night, when the cars were coming towards you, you could see uh, the headlight shape of cars, and I could tell what the cars were in uh, in the dark just by their headlights. And I just used to love doing that, and just used to really, you know, pay attention to everything that was happening on the roads. Um, you can't do it now because of these stupid bloody white LED lights that blind you. Um, but yeah, so um, I think that was one of my first memories of sort of um just going down the road and just being like that's a escort that's a um i don't know fiat uno you know that sort of stuff so yeah great um always been into cars um and uh my first ever memory of driving a car was probably when i was like about four which i was sat on my dad's lap uh driving a renault traffic van around a car park i think i was just doing the steering and he was doing the pedals um so yeah just love cars that's that's my background is just a big car lover um really and other stuff which we won't go into but we can do one day get me on a pod podcast somewhere you know i'll just sit there and tell everything for hours get me on some good podcast tell people if there's any podcasts that you um listen to and you really enjoy message them or stick my name in the comments and say you should get this guy on because i'd like to do that John Callahan says, fantastic question, whatever happened to the rascal and did it end up back in the Suez Canal? Uh, it didn't end up back in the Suez Canal. <laughs> um, it was, uh, uh, it went to a guy not far from here um, who's just going to weld it up and, and get it get it fixed. Um, I don't know how far he's got with it, I haven't heard from him in a while, I haven't spoke to him for a little while. So um, uh, yeah, if there's ever an update, I'll let you guys know. Not many of these left to do now, but there's been quite a lot. It's been a lot more than I thought, um, which, uh, again, really appreciate. Um, Dave Warner says, what's your favourite Japanese classic car um, and one that you'd like to do for Left 4 Dead? Interestingly, there is a Japanese 90s car coming up for a Left 4 Dead soon, which I'm really excited about. Um, so you'll see that in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and my favourite Japanese car of all time, boringly, Skyline probably. Um, I think they are, you know, the, the proper sort of GTRs, um, not necessarily the new ones, I'm talking the more sort of 90s ones, um, early 2000s. I just think they're pretty monstrous. I'd love to have one of those one day. Um, but MX-5s have always been a real sort of soft spot for all of us, um, my friends and stuff. Um, I want to do a Mazda MX-3 Left 4 Dead because uh, my old man used to have one. 
uh, yeah, so things like that really. Just um, Japanese cars. I do like Toyota Celicas. Um, really like. Um, if I could take any around the Nurburgring, it would be a Mitsubishi 3000 GT. <coughs> Again, one of my favourites. I love those things. They're so so good. Um, so yeah, there you go. Jeff H says, is YouTube your only income um, or do you have another job? Um, yeah, it's pretty much my only income. I do have small bits of income from two other businesses that I own, as I said earlier. Um, and if you're dead savvy, you can probably work out what they are just by looking at the description um, in this video and trying to buy some t-shirts or hats, which is always very, very helpful to me and does help pay the bills um, so if you look on the description you can probably work out what one of those other businesses is and I've had that business for about 10 years that particular one um, and uh, I love it it's one of my other big passions in life Casement 18, Casement, Casement, um, it says, uh, I'd love to see the Morris back on the road running and driving. And yeah, so the Morris is not owned solely by me. It's owned by um, Aled, who's a business partner in one of the other businesses. Um, and uh, it's both of our cars. So it's very difficult to get us both together to work on it. Um, but I want to do that soon because I'm, I might there might be some stuff going on here and I'd like that car to sort of be a bit more finished off um, so we are going to crack on with that but I think Spitfire first and Polymondeo first and a lot more left for deads before we get stuck into that Morris but it's definitely going to happen workshop uh, Rob who uh, I think is partially taking the piss he says um, <laughs> uh, do you prefer the Milwaukee or the um, DeWalt if you had to use one for the rest of your life uh, I use the Milwaukee more <laughs> there you go Milwaukee's great I think they're really really good um, DeWalt he's talking about the big um, impact gun and that will get anything off it's a wicked bit of kit um, but yeah I just use the the, the Milwaukee more um, thanks for you know playing along Rob thanks for getting involved and this is the last question the end of the episode and this is from Bertolt B um, and they say if um, all your cars were in a big place and there was a fire, which, and you could only save one, which one would it be? Which is a horrendous question to ask, but a really good one. It's going to be the truck. It's going to be the truck. The Mini's close, because it's probably worth the most, um, but Minis are very, very common, there's a lot of them. That truck is the only one that looks like that, you know. It's a very unique car to me. It's probably a lot of F250s around, but um, I just, I love it. I absolutely love that truck. It, it, it does, yeah, what else can I say? It just does absolutely everything that I want it to do. Um, so I would be running in with the truck keys in my hand and it would fire up straight away and it would drive out there. But what I could probably do is I could probably chain all the other cars to the back of the truck and drag them all out with it you know um it will pull a house down so i could pull the fire off the, all the rest of the cars with the truck um but there you go anyway this has been a lot of fun hasn't it um i hope you've enjoyed it i hope you've enjoyed hearing your question read out if you did send us a question in and uh, what a great way of sort of celebrating the first year of the of the tasty classics youtube channel um so yeah thanks very much for watching and I will see you, no doubt, in the next Left for Dead, which is going to be coming out maybe in a week's time. So, yeah, see you soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.